But let me tell you about other stories. Now, Ghana police in Kwabenya raided a house in a showman believed to be the office of gay, gay rights activists, uh, LGBT rights Ghana. Government has in the last few days come under intense pressure from religious and some pressure groups to shut down the said office after social media photos showing a fundraising event had been organized by the group at what was described as a community space. Joni's editor Fred Smith was there. Now reports. This five-bedroom apartment located on the hills of Ashongman here in Accra has been the subject of controversy on mainstream and social media for days after photos of an LGBT fundraiser event there popped up on Sunday. It has among others beds, sofas and gay magazines. Following the raid, Members of the group went on social media and asked all human rights organizations and allies to speak out against what they described as an attack. The post reads as follows. This morning, our office was raided by national security. A few days ago, traditional leaders threatened to burn down our office, but the police did not help. At this moment, we no longer have access to our safe space and our safety is being threatened. We call on all human rights organizations and allies to speak out against... But following a viral videos on social media of LGBT activities taking place in the capital Accra, the police in the company of the landlord have decided to visit this facility where it's alleged that an LGBT event took place a few days ago and to ascertain for themselves if the claims were true indeed the landlord in the company of police officers came here there were men who were in the facility uh, the police uh, tell me about two of them uh, were in the facility initially when the landlord started knocking there was no response uh, from those who were in and after a while uh, they realized that those uh, people in here had taken to their heels and uh, scaled the wall. Uh, the other rooms we've not been able to access yet. The police have so far secured the facility and intend to break into the other rooms and investigate uh, what may, uh, may have been kept over there. It is exactly the site which landlord Dr. Asensu Jan Bibi says violates the agreement signed with the tenant. Mm. He got the house. I, I have not met him personally. It was through the agent. I called him and asked him, what work do you do? He said, so they are an NGO, I mean, promoting health. He said, from where? He says, oh, they, their funding is from Sweden. He said, okay. So in the midst of COVID, I mean, it was agreeable. But I told him not to touch anything without my permission, not to change any painting, no fixtures. And that is embedded in the tenancy agreement. So when I got the information and he was trying to be dodgy and he realized I was getting angry, he said, oh, we promote the health of this LBGT, whatever. And I said, well, come on, what do you mean? Then I told him, end there. I'm moving from Kumasi to Accra right now. So yesterday, one o'clock, I set off and I called national security. I called the police commander for Kwabinya. And I got to Kumasi around 7. So they said it was too late to, this morning. We are going to have this operation. The traditional rulers of Kwabenya who oversee a shongman, disgusted about the use to which the facility has been put. Ni Ayitaki speaks for the Kwabenya traditional authority. You have to follow up to this place. Because there are some people who were banned on, you know, causing me because we don't want this kind of activities in our area at all. You know, uh, 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 this, this authority, this area, actually we have so many divine issues here. We have churches, we have all that. And we have children that, that is coming up. And then we also have an issues that we have grappling with. And then all, all this while, then these people do have to come in with their different activities. As investigations begin, police say they will scan the facility for evidence of LGBT activities. In the meantime, police will maintain a 24-hour presence there until all evidence have been obtained. Fred Smith, Ashonman. The acting country director of Amnesty International, Frank Doi, is joining me. Uh, Mr. Doi, thank you. What are your thoughts, first of all, about the shutdown of these offices? Okay, thank you very much for having me. 
Uh, Amnesty International as a human rights organization is very clear in terms of what we promote, what we protect, and what we endeavor to help fulfill. So our work is focused solely on the impartial protection of fundamental human rights and freedoms. So that if an individual or a group of persons are found to be engaging in an act of criminality in any facility at all, they will respect the right thing to be done, which is for the law to take its course. In this particular instance, what we have heard is that the facility was invaded based on the, the assumption or the allegation that there are some individuals in the facility who are engaging in certain activities that are in violation of our laws. Our concern is, is that the rights of Ghanaians to privacy and, and property is guaranteed by the Constitution, Article 18, clearly spells out every Ghanaian's right to privacy and property. So that if for some reason uh, a facility is to be invaded by law enforcement agencies, the question we would ask is, what is the procedure provided in our laws? If it has to do with the individuals renting a facility for use, mm -hmm. and it appears to the landlord, or it seems to the landlord that a facility is not being used for the intended purpose, it's clearly provided in our Rent Control Act you know, as to what should be done in order to reclaim or recover that facility. But the circumstances under which the facility was invaded is what we consider to be a clear violation of the very laws that we all seek to uphold. Uh, it is important to make this very point that Amnesty International recognizes that issues about LGBT, you know, QI and all that are very sensitive, you know, very controversial issues. And so we always want people to understand our position that Amnesty International as a human rights organization does not endorse or support any act of criminality. But then when the rights of individuals are clearly violated, then that becomes a serious issue of concern. You know, to ask. The question we'd like to ask again is whether or not the individuals who were found in that particular facility were seen engaging in any act of criminality. Mm. If they were not, then clearly it's an issue you know, of you know, the, the security agencies engaging in an act that is not supported by our laws. But if they were found to be engaging in any act you know, that contravenes our laws, then we would expect that the right thing be done, which is that the due process of the law must be followed. The, the, then let me ask about uh, the fact that they, they, they bolted, uh, according to the police, when they got there. Um, if you, the, the question that people, the logical question that people will ask is, if you know that you're not doing anything wrong, why do you resist arrest, for example, or just uh, escape from being uh, interrogated? Because we were, not, we were not told that they were going to be arrested or anything. The police approaches them and then they run away. They, the, the presupposition here is that you know you're doing something wrong. Okay, so that, that, that is a presumption or an assumption. Yeah. Okay, so, so that if the police invaded the facility, Maybe the manner in which they invaded the facility might have been, you know, the reason why the people in the facility voted. It may not necessarily be because they were engaging in any act of criminality. But if they were, then we would expect the police, for example, to follow, you know, the due process of law um, and, and in, in ensuring that, you know, the right thing is done. Okay. I'm saying this within the provision of the Rent Control Act which also clearly spells out the processes and procedures mm. by which a particular facility can be, can be yeah. you know, recovered. I, 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 I think so that's a, that sorry to jump in. not followed. So, sorry to jump in, Mr. Doi. I think that's a point that you have made earlier because I, would, I need to wrap up quickly. I just have a quick one about the, the landlord's position is that the property was rented for to be used for an, a health NGO. But uh, he, 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 when they went into the, the, the premises, what they see are um, LGBT magazines and beds. Um, does that strike you in any way? 
Well, it does to some extent. To the extent that the, the landlord wanted to recover mm -hmm. his facility, mm -hmm. one would have expected the landlord to follow the provision in a law. Of course, not holding anything against him as the owner of the property, but we are concerned that in an attempt to do what is seemingly right, you know, in the eyes of the landlord or by the security agencies, our own laws are also being violated. Okay. But because remember, there are laws clearly state that, you know, even an accused person must be presumed innocent, right. you know, innocent until proven guilty by a competent court of jurisdiction. So okay. all that we are saying is that whatever it is that we want to do as individuals or as law enforcement agencies, it is important that we all follow the, the laws. laws that we have laid out because Ghana yeah. has laws and those laws must be respected. Mr. Irrespective Doi, of the individual or individuals involved. Mr. Doi, I'll say a big, very big thanks to you. Sorry for that rushed up there. We need to take a quick break here. Frank Thank Doi, you. Frank Doi is the acting uh, country director of Amnesty International. This is Joy News Prime. I am Gifty Andopia. I'm right back after this. <laughs>